Welcome to part two of my power break project. In this video, we're gonna be looking at the best technique for shooting a power break. There's lots of different little things out there people will nitpick on, but I focused on four different things for my data collection. So the first of the four things I focused on was your follow through. I noticed some people, when they follow through, they follow straight through, but their body stays down, right? But other players, when they follow through, they actually pop up in this like power position where they're almost like throwing their body onto the table, right? They're trying to get every last bit of their atoms into this break shot. And is it better, is it better to stay down or is it better to actually do that pop-up stroke that people do? The second thing I was curious about was where you should hold the cue. Traditionally, a lot of people say you should hold the back of the cue because you end up with this longer power stroke. But I also see people choking up and saying that they get this like power muscle punch, like it's this jab stroke that they say works even better. So I'm curious, is there a difference between the two mathematically and how fast the ball moves when you use that stroke? The third thing I wanted to look at was what kind of bridge you use. I see some players do a hand bridge, right? They put their hand on the table, usually a closed bridge, and they try to break straight from the table. But there's a handful of players that like to break from the rail. They put two fingers on the rail and they break this way. And I was curious, do those two techniques differ in how effective they are? And finally, the fourth thing I wanted to look at is the bridge length, right? Some players do a really, really long bridge length, right? A really long stroke, while other players go up close to the ball. This is kind of comparable to where you hold, uh, hold the cue, but it's not on this end, it's not on your back end, it's on your, the bridge end. Should you have a long bridge or a short bridge? I decided I was gonna combine every single one of these factors and mix and match them every way possible. There's actually 16 combinations and I shot each combination 10 times and I collected the speed of the ball each time. Now, before I reveal the results to that experiment, I want you to try to guess which one is the most powerful way to break the balls apart. So follow on the left-hand side, pick between C and U, that should you be crouched in your follow-through or upright. The second category, you'll follow through this map, you will pick either the short bridge or the long bridge. How far should your bridge be from the cue. Then you have the short grip and long grip. That should you hold the back of the cue or choke up. And then finally, should you have a hand bridge or a rail bridge? Indeed, one of these combinations was the very best of all, and some of them were clearly bad combinations and bad techniques. So here are the results of my experiment. After taking 10 shots with each style, I threw out the bottom five speeds, throwing them out for user error. I wanna know what's the best case scenario for these different techniques, and I averaged the top five. So our big winner was a crouched follow through, the long bridge, the long grip, and a rail bridge. That was over 17 miles an hour in this comparison. Second place changed only one thing. It was with the upright follow through. That seemed to not have as big an effect, right? You were still over 17 miles an hour. And in third place, changing out was the long bridge versus the short bridge. The bridge length was not as big a factor as I thought it would be. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up the different combinations uh, separated, right? So these are technique-specific results. So crouched and upright, as you could see in the bigger results, had a very little difference. Overall, they averaged around 16 miles an hour. The short bridge to the long bridge had a, a difference of about half a mile an hour. The short grip and long grip was almost one whole mile an hour, but the biggest difference, and this was the shocker to me, was my hand bridge versus my rail bridge was a very, very different speed. I thought on a hand bridge you'd be better because there's, there's just less space for the ball to travel. But actually for me and my technique, a rail bridge was superior by almost a whole mile per hour faster on the cue ball speed. It's pretty clear to me based on my data, the best technique for breaking a ball is breaking from the rail itself with a long bridge and a long grip. Whether you go upright or stay crouched, that sort of didn't make as much of a, a difference. Now, I am expecting the comments to fill up with some people saying, no, 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 it's best to do it this way. Sure, keep doing whatever you're doing, but what I would really appreciate, if you did some data on your own, prove me wrong with numbers. Because for me, this is the best way to break.
Now there's some other things we can talk about for technique, but I just wanna do two more things to wrap up this video. From what I saw over and over, I can't emphasize enough that I could see when I hit the balls head on, I really split them apart. But when you miss hit and you hit the balls to the side, let's say you do even just a three quarter ball hit on the one, there's just so much less speed transferred to the pack. You, you're better off slowing down your stroke a little bit and making sure you hit this pack dead on. You have a second bonus on that, is the best break shot ends up with the cue bouncing back into this circle zone in the middle of the table. The likelihood is you're gonna have the best chance at another shot. The second tip I would give you is make sure you have a good pre-shot routine. For me, that's three things. You don't want a checklist of like 10. You won't get through them all. Oh, point your toe this way. Turn your hips this way. Settle in, right? You gotta make an acronym for all these things. No, no, no. I do three things and I'd recommend something like this. First, make sure you put the ball in the same spot every time. For me, I put my cue just like this. I put the ball out here and then one ball further. This ensures that whether I'm on a seven foot table, eight foot table or nine foot table, I have the same bridge length every time. The second thing is, before I settle into my stance, I do a pre-stroke above the ball. Most people just practice this tiny shot, but if you wanna get your brain ready for a full follow through, you want both your body and brain practicing that ahead of time, right? So get your body shooting over the top of the ball before you settle into your stroke. Then, when I settle into my stroke, I do one last check. I double check that my hand is all the way at the back of the cue. There's just something about my mental feel that I can, I almost always have to like scoot back just a little bit. But that's my last check, is make sure I'm holding the back of the cue. And after I've done, I'll even do one or two more full strokes over here, and after I'm done, I'll let loose.